Hello and welcome back to Capcom Classics Collection Week. In this installment, I'm taking a look at 1942, released in 1987 by Capcom. This is the follow-up to 1942 and one of the very best games on Capcom Classics Collection Volume 1. So let's play some of this. We're going to be playing this in its default settings, so, you know, in the original aspect ratio with the original music and original controls. This is the 1998 re-release version, just the same as um, all the other versions that seemingly use the 98 ROMs. So just like in 1943, or 1942 I should say, um, what you are here is you're a single lone P-38 pilot taking out swarms and swarms of Japanese fighters. But what's different about um, 1943 compared to 1942 is, first of all, you have a health bar. You no longer get destroyed in a single shot. In addition to having far better graphics, it also has, you know, actual music that's rather enjoyable to listen to. The soundtrack for 1943 is, uh, quite good. You also have various power-ups that allow you to, um, to attack enemies in various different ways. The power-up system is kind of like in um, Konami's Twin B, in that you shoot the power-ups more times to change them um, to get better and different things. But in addition to that, every stage is divided up into first attacking enemy plane squadrons and then attacking um, ship squadrons. So now I'm going to be taking out um, some Japanese boats and like their their um, attack craft if I can. See I didn't shoot the power up there and it was just um, one to give um, to give more health. It's a health thing if, if you don't shoot them to become weapons various different types. The spread shot is pretty useful because you know you can uh, take out opponents from um, the side. Oh, I'm almost dead. Once again you can do the loop-de-loop. -loop. Oh, I got destroyed. Your mission is successful if you destroy at least 50% of the enemy ships. Alright, with all that done, now let's go back, let's go into its, into its settings, and let's adjust some things. First thing that you can do is you can change the sound remix and turn that on. Next, I can go into the controller settings and put on Rapid Fire, which really, really helps in a game like this. Alright, so Rapid Fire is on, yes. Alright, let's play it again. But in addition to that, I can even go into the video settings and go for enhanced mode and play it again like this. That puts the scoreboard to the side. This makes the game so much fun to play. This is, again, by far one of the highlights of the Capcom Classic Collection Volume 1. I really, really like this game.
Now, even if you don't get hit, um, your power-ups eventually will go away, and that's because they're sort of timed in, um, like, an ammo thing where you can only use them for whatever specified period. The number is at the bottom of the screen there. You can see it's 30 right now. It's not really an ammo meter, but it's really just a time how long you can use that weapon for it defaults back to your... Um, just your machine gun twin shot that you have by default. The shotgun is really awesome because it can also take out enemy fire. Although I'm going to lose it real soon. Yeah, I'm back to, back to the three-way again. Oh, but what a difference Turbo Fire makes. Just simply hold down the fire button and that's it. Fire and forget. Alright. I got about a close to 100% as possible. Oh, that is 100%, okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna play until I get a game over here. So again, the sequel to 1942, you have all the same things that you can do in 1942 again. You can do the loop-to-loops, you know, um, you have a limited number of those that you can do to, you know, avoid shots that you wouldn't be able to avoid otherwise. Um, you also have the screen crash attack, which is like a, like a big bomb that uh, can be pressed with like your secondary fire button, in this case the, uh, the Y button, but you can map it to whatever you want. All right, auto cannons. It always seems strange to me that this game was like made in Japan, you know, fighting against the Japanese Imperial Army. You know, like it's kind of like like what, like. Can you imagine, like, the Americans making a Vietnam War game, like, and you play as the Viet Cong, and you, like, kill Americans? No, that would never happen. But apparently, Japan, you know, thought it was cool for to make a game like this, to, you know, virtually kill hundreds of thousands of Japanese as an American. It's kind of strange to me that there was never any, like, outrage for this, but apparently this game was popular in Japan. Like, all the 1940 games were popular in Japan. I guess they just like good games and, you know, storyline and historical issues be damned. Oh, I died. Alright, well, that'll be the end of this video. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions about this game, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Um, be sure to stay tuned real soon as I continue on with Capcom Classics Collection Week with another look at another game here. So until then, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Well, I didn't do very well that time, so I don't even know why I'm bothering, but whatever. Yeah, not very good.